Hey everybody, uh, it's me, it's Fish, and Baxter here. Uh, I just wanted to apologize first of all that uh, I know I know I haven't made any videos in like you know months, but there is a reason for that. Uh, I have had computer issues for a little while. Like here, let me show you what I mean. Um, yeah, I don't know what's happening here. Uh, yeah, nothing's nothing's working. Uh, <laughs> You know, and it's just, I don't know, uh, I think it might have something to do with, I, I just, you know, I switched browsers over to Internet Explorer, I think I might have gotten some weird add-ons or something. Uh, it might be dust, like, you know, I haven't cleaned out my computer in a while, but, um, you know, yeah, leave a comment letting me know how to fix this, and, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, try, and I'll try and get this video done as soon as possible. Username 666 is pretty damn popular. At over 400 comments, it outshines the vast majority of pastas on the wiki. But hey, we've done this song and dance before, right? So let's get it out of the way quick. Popularity doesn't mean shit. So is this story actually any good? No, not really. It's pretty short and has a lot of grammar errors, corny writing, and it simply isn't scary. The idea of a haunted or possessed web page is interesting enough, but it's not executed well at all. So at the request of meme e500400100, let's take a look at username 666. So I joke around with her, I'll call her up, say, who is this? And I'll just go, the devil. Our story begins with our narrator telling us about YouTube and some of the history of its community back in 2006. Most people back then just posted videos of cats, elephants at the zoo, or shitty creepypasta reviews, but one channel caused enough controversy to be called. Okay, right away, let's talk about the English. Bad English is a pretty big pet peeve of mine, since it causes a lot of stories to become pretty much incomprehensible. While it can lead to some funny moments, when I'm trying to actually sit down and read something, it gets old fast. Like when I was reading through JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4, the last few chapters were somehow replaced with the shitty Duang translation instead of the actually good one that I had been reading up until that point. It really soured the mood for me and just made what was happening even more confusing. I had no idea how the fuck Bites the Dust worked for the longest time because of it. While the username 666 isn't Duang levels of bad, it's definitely pretty bad. So anyways, our narrator tells us that there was one user who posted a ton of what's basically gore and blood fetish porn before being taken down for violating the terms of service. But the channel can still be accessed! So basically someone working at YouTube posted their experience with the channel and that's gonna be the rest of the pasta. Why it couldn't have just started from there is beyond me. I mean, it's not like the guy working at YouTube dies or anything, but hey, this pasta is short enough as it is, it doesn't need my advice on how to make it shorter. His co-workers at YouTube are telling him one day about some account they've recently suspended, which seems kind of weird considering how many YouTube channels must get shut down all the time. Like, even back then, you'd think this would be a pretty routine thing by this point. One of them gives our, I guess, main character a slip of paper with a link to the channel on it. YouTube.com slash 666. Our hero punches the link into the computer and gets... nothing. The account is still suspended, as it should be. But for some unexplained reason, he refreshes the page a bunch of times, which leads to some weird glitches that mess up the screen. This is a problem for me because why would anyone ever try this? This seems like something that someone would only try because they heard about it in some internet urban legend. I mean, think about real urban legends. The conditions behind a lot of them are very specific. Like, how would you ever know that turning off the lights and saying Bloody Mary three times in a bathroom was supposed to summon a spooky ghost lady if someone hadn't passed that information on to you? And this is someone who works at YouTube, so the least they could do is explain that in that time period, the YouTube staff had a means of looking at suspended accounts that only they knew about. Anyway, at first it's just weird issues like every video thumbnail and the homepage disappearing and only showing the number 666, but eventually the actual channel shows up. Now, for a pasta about what is essentially literal gore porn, I thought the content would be a lot more nauseating and shocking, but it's not. This is mostly due to the ineptitude of the author, being completely unable to describe anything that's happening. For instance, one video shows a woman drowning in a pool of blood and, quote, disgusting things happening. 
Like, come on, give me a little bit more to work with than that. How am I even supposed to make fun of that? I think the description that takes the cake for me, though, is a video that showed swirling graphics. That's it. Never mind the color or any other detail. Anything else is just swirling graphics. So your typical creepypasta shit happens at this point. He decides to close Internet Explorer. Hey, it was 2006, don't judge. But nothing's happening. To quote the story, it wouldn't budge. He's watching this vaguely creepy video until he thinks, The shutdown button. Of course. Of course! Exactly like that. You know, like how people think? But that doesn't work because, hey, this is a creepypasta. And he assumes he's been hacked. He basically gives up at this point and doesn't think to manually unplug his computer or anything, and the drowning girl in the video keeps starring at him. Then a jump scare happens, I guess, as her hand reaches out of the video and Internet Explorer crashes, but hey, what else is new for Internet Explorer? So then the guy gets fired, I guess, and he ponders on the nature of the channel. Quote, Could this actually been made by the devil? Was it a joke to scare YouTubers? Okay, call me crazy, but I think the devil has better things to do than check in on his YouTube channel. He's got an army of darkness to assemble before the rapture descends upon us, and that's not going to make itself, alright? Checking how many likes he has on his Minecraft Let's Play can wait until hell swallows the earth. The blog this was all posted on vanished a couple days later. Try to get to it now only leaves an error message. Removed by admin. Error code 666. The blogger sent our actual narrator all of this by email, but this only makes you wonder why the blogger couldn't have just been the one telling the story again. And who the fuck is the narrator in relation to this person? We, it's never explained. He leaves one final note. Never go nor refresh username 666. Once you have finished, it will never stop. It won't come out. And that's basically the end of the story. There's like this little side story at the bottom of the page about how another username 666 channel was found or some stupid crap. It seriously doesn't even warrant description, it's just nothing. So that's username 666, a pasta with nearly unreadable broken English, corny writing, and a needlessly complex means of switching between two main characters. It kind of makes you wonder why it's so popular, right? No, it doesn't. You've all seen the username 666 video. You know why this pasta is popular. Have you ever taken a hollowed out skull and sipped blood from it in the glorious name of Satan? This is Satan. This Satan. Username 666 actually started out as a short YouTube video by Nana825763, who we'll just call Nana from here on. Aside from the corny narration and switching between two main characters, it follows the story of the pasta pretty closely, even ending on the hand jumping out of the video. This was something that really confused me as I was reading this and writing this episode, because I was wondering just what happened here. Was this pasta originally released first, and then Nana made a video based off of it? Did Nana release them both at the same time? He is Japanese, so that would explain the broken English. Well, I checked the history of the pasta and found out that it was originally posted in December of 2010 by a user named Panini's Cupcake. Well, the user named 666 video was released in February of 2008, well over two years before the pasta. So does that mean someone just aped off the success and talent of someone much more creative than themselves and put it into text form? Yeah, pretty fucking much! I mean, to be fair, they do credit Nana at the start of the pasta, but that only added to the confusion for me. Still though, it reminds me a lot of what happened with Jeff the Killer. How Sesuar made the character and put him in a YouTube video before the pasta came along and stole the spotlight away completely. That's thankfully not the case here as the level of quality on the video is immensely higher than the pasta. The visuals are disturbing and eerily organic. There's great buildup, you can really feel the desperation in each click of the power button and close button. It's a good video and it's popular for a reason. I don't have a source to show this because searching for specific posts on Tumblr is about as fun as dripping scalding hot cheese onto your crotch, but Adam Rosner, the creator of Tribe 12, has said that he plans to do another ARG after Tribe 12 based on the username 666 video. So in light of this pasta's disservice to a really talented content creator, and as a plug because I love his videos so much, we're gonna spend the rest of our time here looking at some of Nana's videos. So let's go. Let's start off with something lighter, which happens to be where I started off on his channel. Something interesting is that I didn't actually start off watching Nana's videos with username 666. 
My friend and I were interested in ant farms at the time, so in my free time, I looked up videos of ant farms on YouTube. Lots of them were pretty interesting, but there was one series of videos that really caught my attention. As I was watching, I noticed in the background of these videos and in the thumbnails, these really creepy dolls with what looked like blood all over them. Aside from that, the videos had a very cutesy atmosphere, with light music, adorable drawings, and it constantly referred to the ants by cute names. It was a bizarre juxtaposition, and I found myself intrigued right off the bat but I was too freaked out to actually watch through them at the time. This was years ago, and at the time, jump scare videos were really popular, and I got burned bad by them. One time a jump scare video scared me so bad, I seriously fell out of my fucking chair. I now know that Nana's approach to horror is a lot more subtle than that, which is something I appreciate. Coming back to these videos, something that surprises me is just how much love goes into caring for these ants. Their home is constantly being cleaned out, they have an elaborate homemade system of tunnels made out of straws, they're fed, watered, and hatched all under Nana's care. These ants are in a good home, as creepy as that home is. At the time of this video, there's 19 videos in the series, so if it interests you, check it out. But hey, let's get back into the really creepy stuff. The spiritual successor to username 666, another YouTube, pretty much describes what happens every time YouTube decides to change the layout of the site, minus the user base rioting over the unquestionably terrible design choices. It's a lot like username 666, but it's site-wide. There's lots of pictures of manic looking eyes and mouths, random pop-ups keep appearing, including the user's webcam recording him as he tries to click out of it. Visually speaking, I'd call it a lot more subtle than username 666 at first, but as it goes on, the background starts looking like dried lava. It gives this creepy diseased look to everything. Making these web pages look alive is something Nana really excels at. It grows worse and worse. The eyes everywhere especially give you the sensation of being watched, until the user simply unplugs the computer and the video cuts out. I guess he finally took my advice from the first time around in the pasta. Moving on to the next batch of videos, we have none. This one isn't story driven like username 666 and another YouTube, but the visuals are still pretty disturbing. Ants are a heavy theme here, crawling everywhere and getting crushed by fingers. I'm guessing now that Nana is an ant mama, that must hurt to look back on. There's freaky legs, eyes, and arms completely detached from their bodies. Oddly sexual depictions of women that appear to be naked, this feels like a European art house project or something like it. The syncing audio makes this feel like an obscure music video too, it's such a unique vibe. This is the kind of thing I love about YouTube videos, you never know what you're gonna get with stuff like this. Next up, Doll is the first video posted on the channel, and another one in the vein of none, much like most of the earlier videos on the channel with bizarrely animated imagery and more creepy legs just floating around. These videos actually remind me a lot of the Witch's Labyrinth from Madoka Magica, but these videos predate that show. Maybe Gen or Ibuchi stole from Nana too, I don't know. Anyways, Doll feels much more like an actual music video than Nun did, with a full song rather than simply syncing the audio with the events on screen. Then there's this other one called... Um... Squares. Squares is a video that will make you think your internet is acting up when it really isn't. I don't, uh, I don't know what's happening here, but it's, it's different. Exploring Ruins is a 10 minute long video, the longest on the channel so far. This one is a pretty major departure from the kinds of things we've seen so far. It's shot entirely in first person found footage style. The amount of detail going into the location he's exploring makes it feel almost like a structured set or something. There's a lot going on here. The video consists of Nana going through what looks like some old abandoned house or something. It certainly looks to be in ruins. At first he doesn't find much, but upon returning to the house soon afterwards, he finds a lot of interesting stuff. There's an old rusted samurai sword, a bunch of clothes hanging everywhere, knickknacks all over the dang place, and a glass case full of creepy dolls. In fact, there's dolls all over the place too, including one suspended from its neck by a rope. This seems to be the only thing he decides to take with him, and the doll is present in several other videos, so I guess this could be seen as sort of an origin story. He keeps describing this terrible, nasty smell, and the constant barrage of warm colors being the only source of light, especially red, doesn't leave too much to the imagination as to what that smell could be. Seriously, it's like all the other cool colors on the spectrum have been purposefully removed from the world in this video, and it's supposed to take place at night. I'm pretty sure something terrible happened here. Anyway, that's about all I'm covering, I suppose. There's a couple videos in a series that seem to have a similar naming convention. Poco Poco Shopping, Pico Pico Maze, Poco Poco Pico Tan, and the making of said video. There's a lot I didn't cover in this video. Like, you should go check it out. Like, the... Uh... Hmm. Every description for every video is the same thing. 
My House Walkthrough. It's the first thing pinned on his Twitter, too. Everywhere you look, My House Walkthrough, My House Walkthrough. The fuck, this must be pretty important. Well, we have to take a look at it. Okay, Steve. I got this one. Nah, nah. That's <laughs> crazy. My house walkthrough is the scariest goddamn thing I have ever seen. My house walkthrough. This is not horror video. Nana, you're a fucking liar! Well, let's just get into it while my sanity is still intact. The context of the video is just about how the title describes. There's a typhoon hitting Japan, and Nana wants to take this opportunity to show us his house. The instant the video starts, there's one thing we noticed. Nana's house is in dire fucking straits. He knows this and takes note of it constantly. The tatami mats are terribly damaged, the wall peels off from the ceiling when it rains, the roof leaks, the ceiling has rotten and fallen away, there are rat nests above the ceiling, it never ends. So he keeps on going through the hallway and hey, there's another hallway which leads to the same hallway? What? It just keeps going and going and going, passing the same couple of rooms over and over and over and over again. The maddening repetition is even apparent in the text dialogue at the bottom of the screen. You'll see the same phrases over and over. A typhoon is in Japan. This is a picture from around the time of World War II. When I open this Fusuma sliding door, there is another hallway. This is the longest hallway in my house. This room was closed up by my grandfather. Grandmother is not here. Grandmother is not here? Where is she? Is she dead? Okay, we found Grand Grand. Let's get, let's get out of here, please. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. This isn't, this isn't terrifying at all. Come on, Nana. Show us, show us what's in the bathroom. I don't like it! The nonchalant treatment of his dead grandparents is goddamn terrifying. The repetition is maddening and in the most horrifying way. The impossible geometry of these hallways is PT and Tribe 12 levels of seamless and just plain scary. And once it gets to a certain point in the video, it seems even the repetitious text has completely gone insane, talking about things that aren't even relevant anymore. And judging by how links to this video are all over Nana's channel, I think it's safe to call this his magnum opus and for good reason. This is my favorite video on this channel. I love it. I fucking screamed when I saw Grandma and I loved every second of the whole thing. Please go see the whole thing on Nana's channel. You can't miss it, it's all over the damn place. And subscribe to his channel too, because we need more people making cool creative content like him on YouTube. Support him in any way you can, he deserves it. I'm glad I've gotten to be positive on this channel for the first time since my candle coat video because my god, this is some quality stuff. Now it's time once again for everyone's favorite section of the video. Let's go back to what this video was about in the first place and take a look at the username 666 creepypastas comment section. Let's take a look at our first one. Just feed the computer to your goldfish and then take it back out and use your computer. Ta-da! No more dumb fake ugly pasta in your way. Um, RTXD says... Very good English. Well, alright. Uh, alright. Well, Smile Dog Creepy says, Gosh, damn it, devil. Okay, okay one, one more, one more. How bad can this be? This creepy pasta is bae. Just saying. 